Ty here. I'm Ivan Zoot, and it is flat top time, and it is flat top time with the classic flat topper. We're going to see how to use this classic clipper cutting tool to create a modern contemporary flat top. Won't be high and tight, won't be military, but there's nothing better than a flat topper for sharing the concepts for creating the vertical sides and horizontal top that are so characteristic of a classic flat top shape. Let's watch. Here we go. Step number one to cut a flat top is to taper in the back and sides with a snap-on attachment guide or guard. You could taper it in clipper over comb. We're going to use a number four guard. It's important to point out that a flat topper flat top will not be skinned through the back and sides because the shortness of the back and sides of the haircut are going to be limited by the thickness of your flat topper. At the very thinnest at the tips of the teeth, your flat topper is a little bit thicker than a number one, an eighth of an inch, snap-on attachment guide or guard. So step number one, in this case with a four guard, we're going to knock in the perimeter of a haircut. Remember, it's not a tapered haircut, so we're not arcing out and away when we get to the widest point of the head. And it's not a contour cut or a buzz cut, so we're not going to follow the curve of the head up over the top. We're going to work to the sides of the head, to the flat of the head, and we're going to exit the head, heading straight up and off the head towards the ceiling to cut in the perimeter in flat top step number one. I've used a four, I could even go as short as a three in step number one to get the perimeter tapered in. Step number one in how to cut a flat top or flat top was to taper in the perimeter. We did that with a guard. Then we dampened the hair, applied some gel, and blew dry the hair straight up to get it ready to cut the top. Step number two is to cut the top. We hold our flat topper from below with our thumb over the top of the handle and our hand and knuckles underneath. Now we're going to come in low here at the forehead. We're going to insert the flat topper and slide it up to the top of the head like that. We're going to work around the clock. We're going to imagine we're looking down from above at our client's head. The nose is 12 o'clock. The occipital bone is 6 o'clock, and the ears are 3 and 9. Think like a clock, think like a wristwatch. We're going to work around the clock. With our clipper, we're going to come in low, and our knuckles, my knuckles on my hand with the flat topper, serve as a clipper guard. When the clipper, when the flat topper gets to top dead center, my knuckles rest on the hand. I will then come in and cut off the hair that extends out beyond the flat topper. Notice I hold that flat topper nice and flat and even with the floor, resting my knuckles against the head for balance, stability, and control. And it's important that I come in until the flat topper is all the way up to top dead center. That was 12 o'clock. Now when I come in at 1 o'clock, a large portion of the flat topper is previously cut hair with a little bit of new hair. When I come in at 2 o'clock, there's even more already cut hair and even less new hair. And I'm going to continue this around the head, always starting low, always coming all the way up to top dead center. If you fail to come all the way up, you're going to cut a corner off. And you'll walk your way around the head from 12 o'clock to 6, and then you'll come back to 12, and you'll work your way out the other side. But by directing those interior layers up to the top, even in flush with the top of the head, and cutting off what extends out beyond the flat topper, you're going to create that top flat shape that is so characteristic of what we're looking for. Step two is cut the top around the clock. Step number one in cutting our flat top or flat top was to taper the perimeter. Step number two was that across the top step. Step number three is down from above. Same idea, hand underneath. This time we're going to start at the top and we're going to redirect the interior hair down from above, looking for the short guide in the tips of the teeth from the previously tapered section, and we're going to take off any overhang by redirecting the interior hair down from above and taking off some overhang. And notice I tip that handle until the flat topper is very, very vertical. If it's tipped in like this, I'm going to cut off the corner. If it's tipped out too far, I'm going to be over square. Roll it down and square it off, and again, working around the clock, around the head, following the positions of the clock, by redirecting that interior hair down from above, the sides of that flat topper pop in nice and strong and bold and square. Step one was taper, step two was across, step three is now down from above, 
redirecting that interior hair down, and again, my knuckles serve as my guard to balance and stabilize my flat topper as I work through the sides of the head. That is step three. Step number four in cutting our flat top or flat top is up from below. And at this point, our flat topper becomes a very large clipper comb. It's clipper over comb. And here we're gonna come in and we're just gonna be doing extra and final blending. We come in from below. And again, I want that flat topper straight up and down. If I'm tipped in with the round of the head, I'm gonna lop off the corner. If I'm out too far, I'm over square. So in this step four, being a little more over square is not a bad thing. One important flat topper tip, anytime you are cutting on your flat topper around the head, try to work parallel to the teeth, either with the teeth, that'll push some hair up and out and slow and restrict your cutting, or come in as we did at the top of the head against the teeth into the spine, that's gonna trap and cut hair more efficiently. What you want to avoid is cutting across the teeth perfectly perpendicular. Cutting across the teeth will cause the clipper to snag on the flat topper. A little bit of it parallel or a slight diagonal is ideal. Perpendicular to the teeth is gonna catch and snag. So that's gonna be step four, to use your flat topper as the oversized clipper comb. And this is even where a flat topper can be used for shapes other than square flat tops as a really great high performance blending tool. And don't forget, dark hair light combs, one of the reasons a flat topper is a light beige color is for visual contrast, making it easier for you to cut. Step number five in our flat topper flat top, like any good haircut, line and edge for finish. Switch to a trimming comb and switch to a trimmer. Detail, line and edge up. That lining and edging will be a little more important on this flat top, because as we said earlier, because it's a flat top or flat top, the back and sides are gonna be a little longer than they would be on something particularly short and particularly military. So line and edge all the way around to knock out your finish. There you go, that's your flat topper flat top. A little more contemporary, not your classic 50s military flat top, but the flat topper makes it quick and easy, a powerful, awesome tool for clipper cutters that want to master the vertical and horizontal intersections that make up flat tops. I'm Ivan Zood. I'm Clipper Guy. ClipperGuy.com is my website for a ton of great stuff. And for the lowest price on flat toppers on the web, go to ZootHair.com. That's my website at the end of the video here. ZootHair.com. Click on products. I've got hot prices on flat toppers and special deals. If you buy a tube of my hair glue, my Zoot Hair glue, or my Zoot Hair Clipper Guy wax. I've got even lower prices because we'll throw the flat top in. You need gel or wax for a great flat top and you need a flat top. Or clipperguide.com, zoothair.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.